Hello everyone. In the rollout of heat pumps, we are seeing an increasing number of homes that are not being suitable for heat pumps to be installed because of the restrictions around R290 and specifically the protective zone that surrounds heat pumps that contain the refrigerant R290. Now I want to get into a little bit of detail, not too nerdy, so stick with me. But I want to just ask the question, is the protective zone around R290 heat pumps just a total joke? And if there was some relaxing of some of those regulations, would that really help installers to just roll forward at a much better pace here's a couple of my thoughts and a little bit of information so i apologize if it gets a little bit ranty but i hope you'll stick with me i won't get too technical or too geeky but let's just a quick overview of what r290 is what we're talking about it's a refrigerant that is transferring energy and it is a form of propane but it's a refrigerant grade of propane so it's very very pure to put it in the most basic terms it has a lower gwp which is global warming potential than the predecessors like r2 r32 and then much worse ones that came before that so if anything does leak out into the environment the atmosphere r290 isn't very harmful to our surroundings at all um, it is very flammable and that is where some of the danger comes in it has a higher density than air so it's heavier and it falls to the ground and it will pull around things if it manages to leak from anything and so the protective zones are there designed to stop it coming into your home that's basically what we're trying to do they don't want a flammable gas coming into your home so let's have a little look at one of the manuals this one is just from my own valent heat pump and this is the same uh, same guidelines that are used across various sizes of valent heat pumps it's not specific to my seven kilowatt but this shows some of the potential uh, precautions that need to be taken and what installers need to know and so this is spread over three pages and I've kind of just chopped it all into here so it's a bit of a mess but I hope you get the kind of gist of you need to leave like for example here if we look at A down in the bottom left hand corner it's asking us to leave a meter all around the heat pump as a protective zone and you can see the various different installations you may be able to identify which one yours is you may have windows you may have doors you may have it wall mounted you may have it floor mounted but they give you all the advice but what happens especially on smaller properties and the vast majority of the UK is we're trying to keep it one meter away from the boundary because of ridiculous planning restrictions and permitted development rights and then we're trying to keep it a meter away from doors and a meter away from windows and before you know it half of the UK it becomes impractical to have a heat pump whatsoever because they can't put it anywhere and we hear over and over that the permitted development rights of heat pumps is they're going to be relaxed but that's been in the pipeline for well over a year so we'll see but this is a simplified summary and i know it's more nuanced than that but if we basically see say a meter around the heat pump for any of your openings and in a lot of cases this will also apply to air bricks and drainage and loads of other things as well so it's not just doors and windows that you need to be aware of Here's the, the next part of my discussion that I've had with a few people. The capacity or the, the quantity that these heat pumps are holding. So, for example, my own Valent Aerotherm Plus 7 kilowatt has 0.9 kilograms of R290 that it contains. And that could potentially, if something goes wrong, could potentially leak out of it. The Valent Aerotherm Plus 5 kilograms is just 0.6 kilograms. And then we have other things that may contain propane. Uh, most likely, if you've got a gas barbecue, you may store your cylinder in your shed, in your garage, or on your patio, out just outside your back door or something. And the most popular barbecue gas cylinder, according to Google, is 13 kilograms. So you can see more than 13 times uh, the quantity of what my heat pump holds. And we have mobile and caravan, mobile homes, those things. Um, they typically have two 47 kilogram big propane tanks, if you've ever seen them, the big red ones normally. So they have 94 kilograms just sat outside the front door with very little protection between you and that giant bomb that sat out there. So 
What's the difference? Where do these regulations come from? Why are they so incredibly strict for heat pumps, but seemingly so relaxed for everything else? Well, um, another one that people could ask about is gas hobs and the LNG or whatever different different places might run on different types of gas for their hobs. If you uh, left your if the the valve inside your gas hob got stuck wide open, then different hobs could be leaking between half a kilogram to 1.2 kilograms per hour into your home. And the big difference really, as I've put here, is the smell. Because R290 is, has no impurities in it and it's a, such a, for, a pure form of propane, the, the warning smell is not there for us as human beings. But there's lots of people, I know uh, Tim from Tim and Cat's Green Walk, he's expressed in the past that he can't smell gas anyway and that's more common than we may realize so there's there's quite a significant danger for gas hobs and sometimes even gas um certain gas boilers with certain leaks there we've already plumbed this stuff into our house and we are not mandating that those gas checks are carried out every year. Unless you're a landlord or a tenant, then there's different regulations. But if you're a homeowner, it's just kind of a recommended thing. Once a year, you should have your boiler serviced. It's not necessary. People go 10 years without anyone ever looking at their boiler. So anyway, there's risk assessments to be conducted and various things. But I just want to put forward one suggestion uh, that I can't believe is I can't understand why it's not being implemented and this would immediately open up so many homes to having R290 heat pumps and that is as simple as detection just like we have carbon monoxide detectors in our homes these days any responsible human being has a carbon monoxide detector because that once again is a gas that can be lethal and is a silent deadly killer in our homes potentially and so we have them there to detect us and to warn us especially around gas boilers or gas hobs and that is something that can be very beneficial so why do we not just mandate R290 detection when we fit R290 heat pumps in the nearest room that has the nearest openings. It's ultimately when we look at the risk level of it, the the quantity of R290 that's contained in these heat pumps is absolutely minuscule. It's absolutely tiny relative to what we're talking about here. It's still contained outside. We're already putting heat pumps in areas that have good airflow. So we expect that the R290 would be, you know, driven away, taken away by wind probably fairly easily even if it's settling down to the ground that's most likely there are actually some studies and some papers that you can find online a couple of them were behind paywalls so I didn't look at those but I managed to find the summary of some and they conclude that the risk of R290 is so incredibly low and we're jumping through all these kind of hoops at the moment and health and safety gone mad um, just for a, a tiny, tiny, tiny risk when there are much, much greater risks that we accept and we just ignore. And that seems to just be because people are perceiving this as the new technology, oh, it must have a greater risk. Whereas, oh, the old technology, that's fine. We accept the risks of that. We know that petrol and diesel cars burn to the ground more, more frequently than electric cars. But because electric cars are newer, people want to point the fingers at the new technology. And I, I guess a similar thing is happening with heat pumps. Anyway, I've waffled on for way too long. But this is just a simple solution. I don't know why it's not being implemented. And this would just unlock the door to so many homes that want to have heat pumps fitted, but they currently can't because for many other, for a multitude of other reasons, it may not be possible. And in some cases, they're just fitting some older uh, R32 heat pumps and other homes, they can't. They have no other option. But anyway, the risk is tiny, but you need to be informed. It's This is not about uh, me just trying to say there is no risk at all. I appreciate there is some risk there, but it is minuscule. And so maybe things can be done to mitigate that risk or to at least 
understand that risk and to prepare for a worst case situation rather than let's just put this as far away from the home as we possibly can because it's not a bomb. Anyway, too much waffling. Goodbye. On to the next one.